On this video, we're going to cover off cloud initialized drives. Now, in the world of home labbing, you're constantly having to build virtual machines. Now, you may find that you do this on a regular basis. If you're like me, you do a lot of testing, a lot of playing around. Generally, a lot of those virtual machines will look very similar. So they might have a certain amount of CPU cores or a certain amount of memory that you're defining to them. Now there is one way to do this and that's to go through the annoying initialization phase that you would have with any kind of distribution. What I'm going to show you today is using cloud in it in Ubuntu to basically go through that step, albeit a lot quicker using cloud in it and templating. Now I am going to show you on the very, very latest version of Ubuntu, which is codenamed as Noble. Now, the time this releases, it should actually be live. What I'm currently working on is just a beta release just to show you. But all you need to do is when you go to the Ubuntu Cloud site is basically pick the very latest retail version, which should hopefully be available today when this video drops. Anyway, without further ado, let's get on with exactly how you go through this process. So if I go to the Ubuntu Cloud Images site, now as the time I'm recording this, actually Jammy is the released LTS version at 2204. By the time this video drops, we should be on 2404. Hopefully as long as Ubuntu stick to their release schedule, you will find that the very latest version of Noble should be online. Now what I'm going to do in this video is just use a beta version just to show you the process. So I'm going to click in here and go into current. Now what we will be looking for is a QCAL2 image. Now you will find if you go back to 2204, they do actually have a very particular KVM type image, which now if they do have available, I'd absolutely recommend that. But this is the one we're looking at. So for this process, all we're going to need to do is capture that. So I don't want to click on it, because if I click on it, I'd actually download it. What I want to do is actually right click on it and do copy link address. Now that's quite important. Now when we go back to our Proxmox host, what I'm going to do is where I would normally store my ISO containers, which is usually if you just build one out of the box, will be somewhere like your local PVE or local uh, device. Now, if you've added others, which the ability to store containers and ISO images, then you can absolutely drop this somewhere else. You just might need to change the command slightly. So I'm going to go into ISO images and you'll see I've already got a version of um, the LTS on there. What I want to do is download from URL. So I'm going to click in here, click paste, query that URL. It's going to see that it's that size and I'm just going to download it. And that's all I'm going to do at this stage in the GUI. What we're then going to need to do is sign ourselves to the shell. So let's just wait until that is downloaded. Now, good. That looks like it's down. Just to confirm, that's where we are. Good. Fantastic. One thing to note, when you download this, if you're not running a cluster, it's really simple. If you're running a cluster, you just need to pick the particular node that you're working on, is to basically go back to there and click on the shell. Now, when I'm in the shell, what I need to do is navigate to a certain location to pick up that ISO. The first thing I'm going to do, however, is create the virtual machine or the template for the virtual machine. So to do that, I'm just going to paste this in and I'll talk you through this. So what this is doing is it's basically creating a VM or a VM stack with the code of 7000. Now the reason I'm using 7000 is to keep it well away from like the 100s, which is normally what you'd start to create in. Um, you could give it any number if you like. Um, I would strongly suggest keeping it above a thousand because unless you're running a thousand virtual machines or a thousand containers, you're not likely to come across that. What I'm then doing is assigning two gig of memory to it. Now, don't worry, we can change this later. This is just to set us up. Similar to the cores, we've got two cores there. I'm giving it the name Ubuntu Cloud, it's just a, a name for me to remember it by. You can absolutely configure that to whatever you want. Uh, the net here is basically saying it's going to default to the virt.io driver and the bridge will be going on the VMBR0, which most people will be the out of the box solution. If you're like me and you're using mine in production, I may have a couple of 10 gig cards in there, which might be on VMBR1, 2, etc. Just go in and change that. So we'll click on that and that will basically create that and you'll see it appears over on the left hand side now we're not going to do too much with that just yet what we're now going to do is navigate to that iso folder so 
The following command will get you there and it's basically just CDing into that particular location. So it's the var lib vz template iso directory. So if I go in there and do an ls, you should be able to see the two images that I showed earlier. So one of them being that uh, 2204 that I downloaded separately and the new Noble server clouding version, which happens to sit there, which is great. So I can see them, it absolutely works. Now what I'm now going to do is basically import that image into 7000. So to do that again is the following command. So basically it's importing the disk. Now this will obviously be a CD-ROM. Uh, at the moment I'm just going to insert it as a disk. So it's going to import that image into local LVM. Now this part here is the crucial part. So this is going to go into wherever you're enabling that storage. So you may notice I do have SSD. Now in theory, I could import it to SSD. All I need to do is make sure that SSD is set up with the correct parameters to receive that. So if you find it doesn't work, it's most likely it doesn't allow ISOs or some particular variation, whether it's a template file, etc. So it's just worth checking on however you provision that storage and what it can accept. However, Local LVM will work for pretty much everybody. So that's going to just import that and it's going to go through that process. Now, depending upon the size, will depend on the time it takes. You can see it's done that pretty quickly for me. It's imported 3.5 gig in a fairly reasonable time. So the next step there after importing the disk is to basically set that device. So what I'm going to do here is I'll talk you through this one as well. So again, this is QM set, so it's set again to 7000. It's giving it a SCSI hardware, so it's basically applying it as SCSI. Um, it's setting the PCI devices in as a uh, zero on the local LVM with that and giving it the, the variation of disk zero. So that again is going to create that, and that's absolutely done and great for us. And then it's to set the cloud initial, initial drive. So again, similar process. Uh, you can find all these um, actually on Proxmox sites as well. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll point you to them, but again, I'll stick these in um, my website so you can go and read all of the commands that you'll need for this particular one. Obviously swap out stuff like 7000, etc. So again, what we're doing here is we're basically setting this to IDE2. So this will be for the CD-ROM. So it's basically applying that local LVM as a cloud unit drive, which is key to this. So that is then done from that point. Uh, what we now need to do is just run a couple of uh, additional commands. One is to basically make the drive bootable. So again, I'm going to paste this in. So it's enabling that boot drive um, to basically be bootable. So we'll just set that. And then the final thing I would strongly recommend you do. You don't have to if you want to not do this. Basically, it's just going to make using the console in uh, Proxmox a little bit awkward. However, what I would suggest is you do run this command just to make your life simple because then you can use the console here. If not, you're going to have to SSH in using some kind of SSH tool like Putty, um, etc. Now, what I'm going to do is just paste this in, but all this is doing is basically setting a VGA serial socket to enable the console to work in Proxmox. Now, that is all done. So, from that perspective, this is in a good place, right? Now, what I won't do is start this. And there's a good reason why I won't start this, because if I do start this, I would then have to reinitialize this drive because what happens is it will create a particular hardware ID. Um, it will set up a load of parameters that are unique to this drive. So if I did then duplicate it, we'd end up with the same host name, the same hardware ID, that kind of thing, same GUIDs, etc. So it's certainly not something I want to do. If you do do it, I will again, on my website link the ways to get around that so don't fear if you have just raised ahead and gone oh, we're going to start it now you can absolutely get back however what i would strongly suggest at this stage you actually take a minute before you convert this to a template and just go in and have a look at this setting so i can go in and change stuff now so this is why i said it's not impertinent that you do all of this so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go and edit this right and i'm going to change this to 4192 so just giving it a little bit more than four gig. Um, again, I might up the sockets here. Now there's a good reason why I'm doing this. You'll see because I am running the latest version of Ubuntu. Uh, probably just needs a little bit more clout on my testing earlier. 
And then what I'm going to do is look at the cloud in it. Now the cloud in it is good because what we're going to be able to do is set certain parameters and these parameters will carry through from the template perspective. So what I can do is set a particular user. So if I wanted to use a user of Express IT, for example, and then my password, not that I would ever suggest you use this, was password, then I can absolutely set that here. What you can also do is set your DNS settings. So I would just suggest in most cases using host settings is good enough. If you need to set certain uh, DNS servers, you can do it here. However, one of the key things you can do here is set a public key. Now, what I would strongly suggest is that you grab the public key from Proxmox, because if you do that, the actual seamless side of it will work for you. You know, you're going to basically keep that consistent. And if you're doing this on volume and on mass, this is going to be one of the easiest ways. However, if you want to generate your own public and private key, you can absolutely just insert it here. So all I'd need to do is click in edit, paste that key in there or load a file and apply that. Uh, the final bit in here is basically around the upgrade packages, and that is to make sure that when it installs, it upgrades all the latest packages, and that's one of the major benefits of using a cloud init file, rather than going and building Ubuntu, because you don't have to do the sudo app get update and all that kind of thing. So either way, this is in a good position now. Now what I'm, like I said, I'm not going to do is I'm not going to start it. What I'm going to do, however, is right click on the device, and then I'm going to click convert template. And you'll notice it will prompt me to confirm this, but I'm absolutely going to do that. Now, what that will do is turn this file into a template. Now, what is the use of a template? Well, let's be honest, the biggest use is for me is this kind of thing. So if I now had to spin up an identical number of very similar sized um, virtual machines, this is absolutely the way to do it. You can do a template in containers as well, so the kind of process works very similar. Obviously with containerization, it's very quick just to do it normally anyway. However, what I'm going to do here is because I've now got this template, I can't start this. There is no option to start this now. The option I have is to clone. So that is the option. Now, if I had a um, cluster, I could absolutely migrate it um, as long as the storage existed on the other side, which is why using local LVM is probably an easy way to do it. You can then go and redefine it later. But what I would suggest is I will just go with that clone. Now, the options you'll see here is I've got a couple of modes available. I've got a linked clone and a full clone. Now, a linked clone will always take a link back to this template. A full clone will give me a completely independent view. So it's totally up to you what you want to do here. Um, I personally just use full clones. Uh, just it's my personal preference. What I'm going to then do is just give it a name. And I'm just going to call this test. Now you'll see here that there is an option for target storage. So I could deploy it somewhere else. However, just for this example, I'm just going to keep it in local LVM, right? Um, and then click clone. Now that will clone that and create that VM seamlessly for me. The good news is, is that the, the main use case for this, I suppose, is if you're using something like, um, or you want high availability, if you're running a Kubernetes cluster, you need to build a load of nodes very quickly. It's a really simple way of actually going about doing that. Now, when it's created, you will see this is now available. Now, I'll just go in and check the hardware. So you can see various options are available to me out of the bat. What I probably will do is just go in here, click on advanced, and just make sure that a couple of settings are changed. Now, this is just me just changing a couple of things out the bat. All I'm gonna go in here is change this to host, so it's passing through that CPU as intended. And I could, again, if I wanted to go in and make some other changes, I can do that. So if I want to give this a little bit more memory, uh, up the processor cores, etc., I can do it, but it's now completely built. I now click on to console and click start. Now, what will happen is this device will boot up. Now, one of the things I noticed when I did this with two gig is it took a lifetime. So you'll probably find that the new version of Ubuntu doesn't play very well with two gig. So it's just something to bear in mind, but you'll see this will run through this whole process in the installation. Now, this is going to basically pull down all the very latest updates. So what will I will end up with is a fully versed version of Ubuntu come the end of this. Now, when I run this on 2GIG, you obviously you'll see this live at the moment. 
this took about three or four times as long as this one's going through so what happened is it sat quite a while at this stage so i'll just speed up the video and hopefully we'll be good so it took around two minutes in total just to get to that stage it's pretty good and there we are we're available to log in You'll probably see in a moment it will pull up an SSH key. Um, don't worry about that. It's going to be destroyed, this VM anyway. And I've not applied any of my public or private keys into this. So, should be able to log in. With my super secure, very bad password. And there you go. We've got our full version of VM there. I'm just going to let that finish what it's doing and there's those SSH keys that I'm not too worried about. So there we go we've covered off in this video how to set up a cloud init image with Ubuntu at the very latest version as well so hopefully by the time this video drops the very very uh, recent release of uh, 2404 LTS will be available to everybody you better download that use this as your now go-to long-term service Ubuntu image, and you'll have a cloud init template ready to rock for all those new virtual machine servers you want to set up in a couple of minutes. If you have liked this video, uh, do me a favor, please hit the like and subscribe because all your feedback and comments are really, really helpful. And as always, I'll see you next time.